walk through is your few minutes to look at a property. And if you can take advantage of those few minutes, you can save yourself a lot of time by not looking at a lot of houses and wasting a lot of money getting inspectors to come in and show you the things that you could have very easily saw for yourself. I've already done the inspection, but I'm just going to point out some of the bigger things that I noticed. I always get started here at the front. The water meter, check the water meter, make sure it's not moving so we don't have any underground leaks. Up here at the front of the home, where the water main comes in, looks like they've had some work done to it pretty recently. You can see how fresh that copper line is, how new this hose bib is. Not real secure, so they replaced some of this PVC here and they've got the irrigation system off. So the irrigation system ties into the water line before the main shutoff. So you can leave the country, leave the state, whatever you want to do. Have your main water shut off to your house, but still irrigate your your um, plants. Yeah, you can still irrigate your plants if you choose to put them in bonding on the water line right there the electrical system look good today got an arc fault breaker that doesn't want to trip inside there irrigation system is completely locked out so we didn't test it this arc fault right here it's not tripping it's not testing not like this one that's the way it should be this one needs to be replaced so we check the AC for 40 amps Make sure we're good there. The wiring under here is all copper today, so it all looks good. 200 amp main service. I do have a old circuit breaker up here that they've likely replaced. Can you guess which one? Who cares? I don't care. But well, we do have um, termite treatment. Looks like 2003, so that's the initial termite treatment. It really depends on what company you use, if you can extend that warranty or not. Especially if you're selling it, some home buyers like to have that warranty when they move in. It's kind of a good selling point if they're worried about termites. The driveway looks great today. Garage door looks great. Walkways look great. We don't have much settlement, much movement. We do have a drain that's broken out there. You know, it's Arizona, a lot of people wear flip-flops and stilettos, shoes, heels, anything like that. You know, that's a trip hazard at that point. So most of the light fixtures on the house are about ready to fall off. That's got a photo cell on the front of that one, photo cell on the front of this. But yeah, it just, this whole thing is ready to fall off the wall. So I'm a little concerned about those today. We do have a pop bottle up there blocking one of those soffit vents. Flashing looks good. You can see some of the underlayment there at the edge of the roof. Doesn't look bad. This is the window on the front of the house. We were having some hard times closing today. It's actually uh, got some moisture inside the window too, so it's fogged out. So we've had a tree here, a tree there. I know it was a tree because there's fence posts there from where they tried to tie it up. Your irrigate or your drain system goes underneath your property right out there to the street. See that black cap right there? That's where the clean out connection is, where the clean out is. So I'm a little bit concerned about your drain system under here with all the roots that were in here at least sometime in the past, but the client did not order a sewer camera inspection today, so I'm not doing it. I'm gonna politely recommend it a little bit, but I'm not gonna push it. 20 year old house. It's up to them if they want to get it. That's your kitchen exhaust above your microwave or in your microwave. So your cooking exhaust comes out right into that towel with the duct tape on it. Gates on the side of the property. Both of the pilasters are loose so the gates don't want to line up and latch, right? And see that's not centered, it's loose against the wall. See this whole thing moves. See the bracket that used to be here to hold it? It's gone now. So we need some repairs on the gates to get them to close and latch properly. So we've got another window over here with some foggy, some etching on it. Windows are not in good condition here today. Most of the screens are in the garage, but I didn't pull them out and test them. This window was wide open when I got here today. 
completely wide open. It's crazy that everything else locked, but the but the window is wide open. International Cooling Product ICP. It's not an insane clown posse, I promise you. But it is three and a half ton unit from 2015. Looks nice and clean. Could use a little updating there, but not bad. We've got an electrical outlet there. We've got a surge protector on the main disconnect for that. Looks good. Eaves here. We've got a little bit of a overhang from this tree. It's not bad. Just keep your eye out for any branches that are going to be rubbing. I think the underlayment on the roof is original 20 years. I wasn't up there recording because there's some neighbor dogs that were barking like crazy and I didn't want to be up there trying to talk over them the whole time. Well, I'll throw up a couple pictures for you to look at right now. We've got a couple tiles that are pushed out of the way, concrete tiles, which is exposing the underlayment. The underlayment is the waterproofing barrier and at 20 years you're almost at its life expectancy. So get those tiles replaced, get a roofing company to come in and give you an estimate of what it's going to cost to re-underlayment. Re or put new underlayment under this. I guess you can call it a re-roof, but the concrete tiles get reused at least once. Patio looks good, sliding door, no issues there. That is a wood column underneath all that stucco. Looking for any damage here on the stucco. You can tell this low E window has got a little bit of reflecting going on on it. Probably got a woodpecker. Oh, that's blown right through the mesh. The mesh isn't even damaged. It's kind of crazy if you ask me. But it's a hole either way. It's got to be got to be filled in. Backyard itself is pretty boring. I can tell why they have the irrigation system off. There's just nothing back here. Completely blank slate for you to do whatever you want, but we do have some depressions right there. Next to the foundation, we've got to get those filled in with dirt, not just rock. Make sure that that water doesn't pond up right next to your foundation. So a couple patches on the stucco, you can see discoloration. Paint's getting pretty thin on this. 20 years, probably never been replaced or repainted. Nail head popping out. Some more screen material showing up there. Stucco on these houses isn't usually isn't very great. There's usually a couple of issues. Primary bathroom window. You've got your AC condensate lines. The bottom one is your typical condensate line. The top one's connected to the drip pan up in the attic. Um, so this is a little bit of staining on this window. I tried to clean it off. It does clean off. Just worried if you can't get it all off or not. So I point out stuff like that to the client. So this is a TPR valve for your water heater. So if this thing leaks, like it has in the past, you can tell by all that blown out soil around it that it has leaked quite a bit. So the water heater in here is almost brand new. They likely replaced it. So this pilaster, pilaster is this thing. This stack of blocks that's put up right next to the house that should be attached to the house so it doesn't move very much and that's where your gate gets connected to so we call it a pilaster when I can move it like that and the gate moves it's usually loose and see I can't even get this latch off the gate is pushed so hard down that you need to lift the gate up in order for that to come off so you need some repairs on that one too On the outside wall, there's a little bit of water damage on the block. Nothing crazy bad yet, but a little bit of damage. Going in. Living room, nice concrete tile floors. Didn't see any problems with them today. Going around tapping on the tiles on a few spots, make sure they're all secured, but it's new tile. If you can find out the company that installed it, that'd be great to get that information, but likely, you know, tile is, tile is good. It's a post-tension slab. You shouldn't have much movement in this. So that was the window that was wide open when we got here today. 
quartz countertops. Walked into the kitchen, get the sink started, get that running, testing stuff, making sure that the sink isn't draining underneath the sink here in the cabinet. We have had some leaks here in the past. Nothing crazy, but there's a little bit of water damage down there. Now this drain hose that goes over to the dishwasher, this white hose right here, that really should be tied up to the top of the cabinet. Call that a high loop. It's kind of like a P-trap, kind of just like this, but for this drain, that just prevents everything from going back into the, into the dishwasher. Um, just so you know, most of these new dishwashers has a high loop built onto the back of it. I just can't pull this thing out or I'm not going to pull it out and test it. It's always a bad sign when they paint right over the pads. That's always a red flag to me. It doesn't look like it's a bad job, it just makes it look crappy in my opinion. Now when you put in new appliances and you're having your house tested, please just remove all this. I had to take it all off and throw it in a drawer just so I could test the oven, but if you didn't pull all that stuff off, the person that installed it never tested it. So how do I need to know it's going to work? So the person that installs it should remove all that stuff and test it and make sure there isn't any problems with it before the home inspector shows up. Back to the oven. Make sure everything's good in there. We always take this out. This tape is really hard to get off. But there is an anti-tip bracket in here. Just this little angled piece of metal that gets screwed into the floor and then your oven slides underneath it. And that, that'll prevent the oven from tipping over. If anybody were to jump on the front of it. So all this debris on top of the oven today happened when I turned on the vent fan up in the microwave. So it does have an exhaust vent that goes out, but as you can see on the outside it was all plugged up and they've got air blowing right in your face. It's coming right here. So I don't think you want to be standing here cooking and having air blowing right in your, your face basically. Microwave was good, we tested it. Tested the fan, test the light function underneath, make sure it's all working, looks good. GFI protection in the kitchens is working awesome. No issues, two circuits, you've got one GFI there connected to that outlet and that outlet. And then there's another GFI there that's connected to that outlet there. So this is that window that didn't open. I don't know if you can tell the fogginess in this window, fogginess in that window. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to see if you don't look at it right. It just looks dirty, but it's, yeah, whatever. It's just really foggy. I shouldn't have taken that smoke detector off either, and now it's going to beep at me. So this, this is what we call foggy. Does that look foggy to you? It sure looks foggy to me. And then areas that aren't foggy a lot clearer. See that? It's not latching either. Need some repairs on that. Water line for the fridge. Didn't test that, but I did test the electrical outlet. Works fine today. Works good. Uh, do have a phone jack if you need to call somebody. Door stop looks good. A little bit of paint on that. That's going to be a high traffic area. That's going to get a lot of hands and tools. Everything sets, gets set on that. So probably just finish that with a really hard paint in my opinion just so you can clean it a lot better just wipe it off and not worry about it staining so we've got a closet here sliding glass door is working good dual fans on the ceiling yes both the lights were working one of them decided to turn off surround sound speakers wired up down there into a proper speaker connection So you can get your surround sound. I don't see a center channel, but smoke detectors are original. They look like they're about 20 years old. They didn't have a date on them actually. And because you have an attached garage, there's no gas here. It's an electric house, but we want to protect your bedroom in here from any carbon monoxide that might sneak in through the garage. We want a carbon monoxide detector in that hallway to protect those bedrooms. 
You want a carbon monoxide detector here to protect this bedroom. You only need them in two spots. Doors are working good. A little bit of staining on the walls. That's going to be really hard to pick up unless you're in the right light. Not really staining, just repainting over discoloration. Looking in the primary closet, making sure we don't have any termite tubes. This is new carpet. Uh, looks like somebody was chiefing a bowl in your closet or something. Probably the workers. Primary bedroom windows. Again, we've got another fogged window here. It's secured by ADT. Window was functioning just fine today. So in the primary bathroom, both sinks are running great. We've got push stop drains in them. Check underneath, make sure there's no leaks going on. Test the toilet. The toilet was giving me a problem earlier. There's no water in it. Hmm. Yep, water valve is on but it's not filling at all. The float's sticking. Yeah, the float's built up with a whole bunch of mineral deposits, making the, the smooth part that this float kind of slides on kind of sticky. These things are not expensive. I'd recommend you replace this whole unit. This thing's getting a little dated as well. So make sure the toilet's secure on the floor. Test the window, test the shower. Didn't have any problems with the shower. I wanna make sure that drop shower drain is on secure. Check the caulking joints. Nothing wrong with this shower at all. It's not working at all. Looks like a brand new shower head, but there's no, no water pressure up there. We do have water pressure at the bathtub though. That plastic around the window here in the primary bathroom has got to be caulked up, cleaned up. It's just some moisture from the bathroom doesn't get in between those panes of glass. Let's seal up that caulking joint on both sides of that window sill. Sure helps. So in the primary bedroom, you've got a duct here with no filter. And right here, you've got a duct with no filter. That's just a jumper duct that's going to equalize pressure from here to here if the door is closed. So if you're sleeping in the middle of the night and the heat turns on, the door doesn't slam shut. AC was working great today. Actually a little bit too good. Yeah, yeah. Checking on the lights, got your um, doorbell right there. We've got a security system built in, ADT possibly. I don't test these fully, so I don't go through all that. When I opened the garage door, it wanted to stop right here, so I pulled a little bit harder and then the screws popped out of the self-closing mechanism up there. So you're going to want to replace that. I, I don't really understand why they put that up there. It, it just doesn't make any sense because this hinge right here, that's a self-closing hinge. You can adjust it by pulling that pin out. That's a self-closing hinge. You can adjust it by pulling that pin out. So it's it's the way it should be with two self-closing hinges, but they added that up on top and it's broken. So just get rid of that and just adjust these two. You don't need that hinge up on top, that door closer. So in the hallway, we've got our air filters up on the top. Nice and clean, a little bit of debris in the registers today, but nothing too crazy. Bedrooms, nice and clean. Fresh coat of paint on here. Electrical outlets are working. Door handles or door holes, whatever you want to call them. They're just falling out. There was nothing holding this one in. You see those two little holes in there? That's where you stick a penny nail down in and just insert it. But before you do that, if you want my opinion, you put some sealant around the edges of that just so it doesn't rattle. Like that. That's all you gotta do. Not a big deal. 
This is kind of funny. This is a locked handle on just the closet door. So they get a keyed lock, even backwards, on a hallway door. Somebody wasn't thinking things through. Next bedroom, same deal, nice and clean. Windows are a little bit dirty, so I can't verify that these seals are okay, but judging by the other windows, I'd be worried about them, especially these south-facing windows. They're gonna get a lot more sun. So I check the trim really good, make sure there's no termite damage or excessive moisture that's come in at some point. That's been covered up. Upside down outlet, that's gonna be your switched outlet. We've got three, uh, three switches over here. One's gonna be for the light. Actually, they've got this fan tied into both. They've got both the light and the fan tied into one switch. So, and then the third one's gonna be for the outlet. So you've got a dead switch right now that's not hooked up to anything. Old fans you used to be able to, and you still can if you get the right fan, wire the light and the fan blades separately to two different switches. So when you walk in, you can turn just the fan on or just the light on. But when they replace these, oftentimes they just wire it into the same switch because they don't want to mess around with it. So now you have to use a remote to switch between the two, which isn't a big deal unless you lose the remote. So faucets again, no issues here, push stop on that, for the toilet here in the hallway, oh look, this one doesn't want to flush either. So what's going on? Toilets or junk or what? Doesn't want to lift up at all. Stuck. Sits back down right away. Let that fill up for a second. Got some caulking gaps around here. Call that a tub spout gap. We have any water dripping down the wall we don't want it to get behind this tub spout so you put some caulking in there make sure this is a plastic one piece tub there's no caulking lines to worry about other than around the perimeter to make sure that this thing is sealed in good so it did flush there we go it's working what a crappy design though if I were you, I, I would be replacing these with something new. Uh, Set up the shower, make sure the shower head's nice and secure, doesn't move in the wall. So I typically run those for at least five minutes and try and get the water up a few inches before I drain it just to make sure that the drain is working good. These old vent fans still operational but they always need to be cleaned out. Tested GFIs, medicine cabinets. And then you've got your attic access here in the laundry. So let's go in the garage here. Oh yeah, we don't have any lights. I'm just gonna open this up a little bit here. See, you don't need that. Why would they even have that on there? Anyway, so switch plate covers are a big deal for safety. You wanna make sure that nobody can stick a butter knife in there and play around with the wires. The water heater, rude water heater, 50 gallon. It's plenty big for the size of a house. These are actually dated 2020. I'd love to see this extend down and over here, because as you can see, this is kind of your home flooring and then this is your garage flooring. The garage flooring has got a slant on it that lets water drain out the door. This cement right here is completely flat. Not only that, but it's got trim all the way down to the floor. So if this gets wet, all that water is going to get sucked up into the trim, then you're going to have trim damage. But if you put it down here, 
as you can see over here, that's all concrete. So even if that gets wet, it's not going to cause as much damage as it would if it was draining up here. So just an FYI, I like to see those drain it on there. I understand it makes a trip hazard. I completely understand that. So it might not even make sense to do it here. But if you can in your house, do that. Typical cracking on the ceiling of the garage. Big old line right down the middle. Not concerned about it. I don't see anything moving around. See the garage is not air conditioned nor is it heated. So temperature, pressure, moisture changes in here. You drive your car in here after you just drove through a rainstorm and now your car sits in here and you know it evaporates moisture into the air. That's why it's a big deal to use exterior grade paint in the garage and not interior paint. Exterior paint helps stop some of that humidity from getting into that sheetrock, whereas it was, if it was interior, you wouldn't have that type of protection. Safety, as long as we're talking about it, you've got a couple wires, cable wires. Somebody wanted to watch TV out in the garage and fire, or, uh, ethernet wires right there, probably for internet. This is a fire barrier. So you don't want fires from here sneaking up into your home and burning your family while you're sleeping. I know it's dramatic, but with this seal that gives you around roughly 45 minutes before a fire breaks out, before that fire is supposed to, or potentially, in theory, could get back into home. Garage door is working great today. No issues with that. Now we see our stamp, post tension slab stamp. Do not cut or drill. There's metal cables through all of this concrete. And you cut or drill into that, they're under a lot of tension. They could break and cause a lot of damage. Not only that, but injury. Here's some of the screens. I'm not testing them, I'm not going through them. You probably want somebody to do that for you as well. Um, that looks like a lot of work. Some staining on the walls, I'm not concerned about that. Checking the wheels and the rollers on the door. They look good. Look like they're the standard metal wheels. You could get quieter wheels, get the plastic ones. But this is facing east, so I'm not too concerned about it getting really hot in here in the summertime. You might get morning, morning radiation from the sun, but other than that, that's about it. That light wasn't working today. And you've got your second attic access hatch for the front of your attic up there. And that pretty much does it for the inspection today. I'm going to put this report together, send out three reports to my client and the agent that recommended me. Thank you, Pat. I always appreciate working for Pat Monahan. So I'm going to throw together a key findings report, which will have all the goodies, all the red and blue items on it at the end of the day. Those are the items that I think should be fixed or repaired or replaced before you buy it or after you buy it. Red items are usually before, blue items are typically after. Don't stress out about anything under hundred bucks. Seriously, if it's under hundred bucks, just note it and move on. But then they're gonna get a property information report that goes over everything. It has all my pictures in it, all the data, all the status, styles and material, everything they want out of the home inspection is gonna be in that big report. And then on top of that, they're gonna get a termite inspection report. No termites, a little bit of faulty grade on the backside, no water leaks, no conducive conditions. So. Looks pretty good today. Besides a couple things that weren't put together very well when they updated this house, it's a perfectly livable house. Um, well, this sucks now that I thought they fixed the uh, toilet here. It's just continually running. Yep. That float was just sticking a little bit. Well, at least we got the water off, but Definitely putting that in the report. I'm Home Inspector Dan. I appreciate you guys tagging along with me today in Phoenix, but I'm gonna go home, work on this report, try and get rid of my headache. So, have a good day. We'll talk to you later.